National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin. She is live for us at the Pentagon. Jen, what are you learning about this? Well, Trace, the Pentagon is not officially commenting on any of the reports of explosions that have taken place inside Iran as well as in Syria and Iraq tonight. But a well-placed U.S. military source uh, tells, confirms to me that what appears to be Israeli strikes inside Iran have taken place, but I am told that they are, quote, limited in nature. So what we have heard so far from Iranian press is that there were three explosions in the Isfahan area, which, as, Trace has, as Trey has explained, that is the location of the Natanz uh, nuclear facility. We have no indication as of yet that the Natanz facility was the target or any of the nuclear facilities were a target tonight. You could have situations where there are air defense systems that would be targeted. Uh, what we know from past reporting on the situation in Iran and what its capabilities are is that Iran is very limited in terms of, and we saw this on Saturday night, in terms of the number of ballistic missile launchers that they have. These are mobile launchers, and they have between 100 and 200 of those launchers. Uh, Israel knows that. Israel saw what Iran was capable of when they fired uh, those ballistic missiles on Saturday night. Uh, so what we can say at this point in time is that there are Iranian-based reports of explosions in the Isfahan area. That is uh, significant because that is the location of the Natanz nuclear facility. I think it would be wildly speculative to suggest that Natanz itself was struck. Um, that is a very hardened site. It's very difficult mm -hmm. for anybody to uh, so, sort of, you know, we hear people talk about, uh, some analysts talk about taking out Iran's nuclear facilities, but most of those facilities are underground. They're hardened. Uh, it is not something that is taken out in one strike or, but the explosions that occurred, I think, Trace, if we look back to earlier in the day, I think it was mm -hmm. significant that the Mariv, which is a leading Hebrew language newspaper in Israel reported that there had been some some of the seven ballistic missiles that did strike inside Israel there was remnants of those missiles found at the Dimona Israel is which is Israel's nuclear plant, that to me suggested that Israel might be laying the groundwork for a sort of casus belli, if you will, to uh, to symbolically strike back in what we're being told by well-placed uh, U.S. military sources is a limited strike, strike inside Iran. Significant, however, because Israel has never carried out a uh, overt military strike mm -hmm. like this in Iran, just as Iran had not done so uh, uh, until Saturday night. So a, Rubic a Rubicon has certainly been passed. Now everybody watches and waits to see what the uh, reaction is. Trace, one more point. I think if you look at the timing of when this uh, strike uh, reports of this strike began. We started hearing explosions just around the same time that the Iranian foreign minister landed in New York and sat down for an interview uh, on another network tonight. Mm -hmm. On C he spoke to CNN. He's speaking to NBC tomorrow. But he landed in New York. Clearly, the Iranians uh, and he issued the following threat. He in, in essence he said that the Iran response, if Israel were to strike inside Iran, will be quote immediate and maximum level quote, will be decisive, definitive, and regretful to them. That was the threat tonight from Iran's foreign minister when he landed mm -hmm. in New York. Uh, we are still uh, trying to get do more reporting, but as of right now, the Pentagon is not confirming these, uh, these reports of explosions inside Iran. Uh, and my best place source right now, U.S. military yep. source, says that this is a limited strike inside Iran. And on that point, Jen, I want to go back as you're talking about the whole concept here. And just for context, people should know you know the Middle East better than anybody. You've spent years and years over there covering this. My, my question when you talk about a limited strike is, does it matter in the perspective of Iran? If this is a limited strike, does that make them more reticent to strike back immediately? Do you think that lowers the odds of an immediate retaliatory strike from Iran toward Israel in the coming hours, possibly days, 
What, what do you think about that? I don't think we can rule anything out at this point in time, Trace. I think this is a very, very tense moment in the Middle East. I don't think anybody can say that this is over. I think one of the reasons you saw such stern warnings and, uh, uh, and you saw uh, from not only the White House, but also other allies, such as David Cameron, who flew to Israel to try and mm -hmm. implore the Israelis not to take retaliatory action. Uh, I think one of the reasons for that is that everyone knows that the escalation ladder goes up pretty quickly after um, after this kind of a strike. So it may be limited in the eyes of uh, of um, uh, regional militaries, but from Iran, the question is from Iran's perspective. Uh, will they feel the need to respond? And we heard from Iran's foreign minister tonight uh, mm -hmm. that they would. Um, I think most likely, as Trey, as Trey had uh, mentioned, what you're going to see, uh, Iran has been enriching uranium to 60 percent. It is a very, very short move right. to move up to uh, weapons grade, and uh, they have enough fissile material for several nuclear weapons and yep. uh, nuclear bombs. And I would expect that they may take a decision to cross that threshold, something they have not taken a decision to do up until this point. So we are moving into, you know, the, the escalation ladder, as I've said, and as has it been explained to me by uh, U.S. military officials and concerned allies, is that uh, this could unleash something that uh, you don't know where it ends. And uh, the U.S. Right. has forces and bases all across the Middle East that stand in harm's way tonight as a result of this strike. Jen, I know you've got reporting to do. I want to let you go, but my, my last point would be I just want to get a feel for if you know, if you've heard, or when will we find out in the minutes and hours ahead about the defensive posture of the United States, the ships in that region. We know we're, of course, instrumental in knocking down these 300-plus drones and, 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 and missiles from uh, Iran toward Israel. What now is the defensive posture of the United States in and around Israel? I think the, it's safe to say, Trace, that the U.S. has been on high alert in the Middle East since Saturday night. I think nobody's resting easy tonight. I think you have sailors um, on board uh, warships in the eastern Mediterranean, the Red Sea, uh, and um, most likely bases, you know, up near the Strait of Hormuz and across the Gulf that are on high alert tonight. I think that, again, uh, the hope is that um, that as I've been reporting, that this is a limited strike. But the question yeah. is, how will Iran react? How will Iran's proxies react? And really, all eyes should be on Lebanese Hezbollah, which is on uh, Israel's northern border with 150,000 missiles that could strike all of Israel. If Lebanese Hezbollah decides to uh, begin striking Israel, then all bets yeah. are off in terms of escalation. Yeah, all bets are off. Jennifer Griffin, uh, we'll let you do your reporting. We'll bring you back on as soon as you have more information. Jen, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.